everybody, I'm Bill Sanders, and this is Watch Art Sci. Uh, today, we're going to take a look at uh, Patrice's collection of mini tiers. And uh, so let's get started. And I thought, well, start a, like climbing a ladder, we'll start on the bottom tier. And there are a, a number of quartz watches here. And the interesting thing about it is, is that of uh, three of the uh, four, uh, five uh, watches um, have, uh, they also have mechanical movement, but these are all quartz. And uh, they all have interesting dials on it, but like I said, they're quartz. And so they're, they're really sort of out of it as far as how do you analyze it other than saying, those are good looking watches. And they are, they have very attractive uh, dials. They have a Seiko, uh, the, have uh, Chopard. Uh, there's uh, there's this one, Alain Delon, which I think is the name of a French actor, uh, Movado, and then a Rotary. Uh, these are all um, these are all <laughs> quartz. So we'll say goodbye to the quartz and let's get over to the mechanical. Uh, they're well chosen. Uh, uh, that I'll say, and we get into watches of standard horology. And uh, these are watches that have not in-house movements, I'll put it that way. Uh, and some of them have, in well, actually, that's not true. One of them, the Orient, has an in-house movement, the uh, Orient uh, Bambino, uh, the Tissot, and the Mont Blanc. Uh, Mont Blanc, I, I know Mont Blanc has its own in-house now uh, movement. I don't know if Tissot ever ever does or not. I know that the uh, uh, when they first made, um, I think they had Omega and Tissot, and Tissot was going to be the uh, the economical one, and Omega was going to be the higher up one. So I don't know whether Tissot ever got one. It's a good looking Tissot though. I mean, the the dial on it is a very attractive dial, and it's got a ETA 2824, um, and that's a, you know, it's a, it's a good, <laughs> um, you know, standard kind of, uh, of uh, movement. Uh, then the Mont Blanc has an ETA 2824, at least that's the, that's, it's a, one of a popular automatic. The Orient has its own um, in-house um, movement. Um, actually, the Orient Bambino is a very popular one, and it's just a one of those plain good-looking watches. Um, what more can you say? Um, all right, let's uh, let's go on. Now, the next group is now these are also standard uh, horology watches. Uh, the Oris is a very attractive Oris diver. Uh, with the bronze uh, waves on it, which I like, and a, a date at the bottom. And the Sin uh, is a fairly, uh, it's got a lot of complexity. It's got a moon phase and um, day and date and a lot of other elements to it. And it's a, uh, it, it's got a, one of those little moon at the tip of the, uh, uh, tip of the, of the hand for uh, uh, for the day of the month around the uh, outside of it. Again, um, this is a standard horology uh, watch. Uh, it's got a Valjuice 7751. And um, uh, the Oris has a um, Salida uh, SW200-1. Uh, and again, they're standard horology. They're... Uh, you know, they're sort of they're standard mechanical watches. Now, the, this next group is where you get into strong horology, and uh, two very very nice watches. One is the Zenith um, uh, chronometer El Primero, and it's got a triple uh, calendar and uh, you know, in moon phase with it. This is a nice, nice watch. And if you look at the movement on this, you can see there, there's not a great deal of, of the, the kind of high horology finishing, 
but it's a very nice finish on this uh, on this Zenith. Uh, and the other one is the Omega Geneva Automatic uh, with a date. Now, this is a caliber 1012, which is one of the earlier uh, Omega uh, or Omega uh, calibers on it. Both of these watches I like. Uh, I've always liked the Omega Geneva. I know that's not the most popular one, but it's uh, I like it. It's just a nice, clean, clear watch. <laughs> and the Zenith, boy, I tell you, you get a lot on that one. And uh, the El Primero movement is is a top-notch movement. So this is, for strong horology, these are very good choices. Now, this final group is that where you get into high horology and not just high horology but in my opinion very interesting high horology first of all there's the Zsa Le Coutre master control home time now I like Zsa Le Coutre a lot uh, mainly because they make good watches they make very good movements uh, this particular movement is the 975H based on the Zsa Le Coutre uh, 965 and then you have the circular um, Geneva waves on the back. That's just sort of a cool finishing touch. But if you look at the uh, dial on that thing, you can see the quality, even though it's a stainless steel. It's good stainless steel and very well finished. Uh, uh, it's a neat watch. It's got that little night and day um, uh, retrograde on it. Uh, just super cool. Now, my favorite of the whole collection is this uh, Parmigiani uh, 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 Calpa XL uh, Hedro Mondi. This watch, now, what I like about it are a number of things. First of all, I like Parmigiani. I think I recommended this one as one of those hidden gems in high horology. And boy, I tell you, um, this one is a nice example of Tourneau. One of the things about this and uh, it's, it's it, that I really like. When you have a torneau shape or a different shape for a watch, you should have a movement that reflects that shape. Uh, a lot of times you'll have a round movement inside of a torneau uh, shape. And it's, it simply is a, a, an indicator of good high horology where you have the shape of the movement reflecting the shape of the case and this is a this is a perfect example of that one of my grail watches is a very expensive one by uh oh uh, let me see there lang and, and hain beautiful watch uh it's a rectangular shape more than a tourneau and of course the movement reflects that uh and here's another example of that Parmigiani Calpa is one of those watches, uh, and they you can find them at very good prices. Now, Patrice on this one got something that was so cool. This he traded for five of his lesser watches, and I don't know which ones they were, but let, let's say that they were like five hundred dollars a piece. So he ended up with twenty five hundred dollars for in terms of for for. For this particular watch, that is like a bargain with sprinkles on it. That's a heck of a good trade. So I'm thinking, boy, maybe that's what I'll do. I'll buy some <laughs> iffy watches at some good prices and <laughs> then trade them to somebody. Um, but this is, I mean, you know, you got two really great high horology watches. Um, the two strong horology watches that he has are also excellent ones. And then the other ones are sort of fillers, you know, or, I guess the, the, the spear carriers of the collection. So anyway, uh, Patrice, this is a neat collection. It reflects different tiers uh, and it reflects very good taste. I got to tell you, uh, even the quartz watches have some very nice dials. I mean, the Movado is classic Movado. The uh, Chopard is great looking dial on it. Now they're all quartz, but man, I tell you, they're well chosen ones. And <laughs> so if you're gonna have quartz, you might as well have interesting ones. But your high horology uh, watches, I think, are both 
just great. Your strong horology is also good. I won't mention just the standard one. They're okay too, I guess. All right. Um, listen, uh, next uh, Friday we're having our drawing for our next free watch uh, for people who have sent in their collections. I indicated, I think I've emailed all of the, the most recent uh, group. And so on Friday we're going to have our drawing. And of course we'll have a regular uh, video along with it. And uh, listen, comments. I'd love to hear your comments on uh, Patricia's collection. Interesting collection. Uh, just <laughs> perfect in, in, in that respect. It, it, in terms of going further, the, the sort of on the exceptional uh, horology, where you get really up there with the uh, you know, FP Jorns and those, I don't think you can find too many bargains on those. I think the sort of the floor on most of those of FP Jorn anyway is something like $20,000. However, there are some other ones. One of the ones that I've been poking around a lot has been the um, uh, Beauvais, because I really like those Beauvais. Now, I got, the, I got one from 1940, and I don't count that as sort of an exceptional horology other than the fact that it has a um, mono rattrapont on it. So um, you might as well start looking for interesting things up on that up on the next tier. You've got uh, you got great taste obviously so anyhow <laughs> wonderful collection and thanks again Patrice. See you guys on uh, Friday and comments. Love to hear your comments about this collection. Any ideas that you have too. Um, I always like those. Those are the most important things. So until I see you next Friday, I hope, this is Bill Sanders with Watch Art Sci, the art and science of Watch Collection.